Richard and today I'm going to be discussing all the formats and some of the tricks about income tax expense disclosures as well as the related financial position disclosures that are required in terms of IAS 12. So um, just to get a starting point, we must remember how do we get academically to the right kind of disclosures in our financial statements. So we obviously have an income tax expense note. And that's obviously going to relate to the figure on the statements of profit and loss and other comprehensive income, income tax expense. So this is going to be made up of two components. Firstly, we've got a heading called major components of income tax expense. And second of all, we're going to the reconciliation, why there is a difference between the tax at the applicable or standard rate versus the income tax and at the effective income tax rate. So that we're going to call the tax rate reconciliation. And next up, after we've done all of that, we are going to do the financial position or balance approach and get the related disclosures for the financial position side. And here we can call it a couple of things. I just usually refer to this as the deferred tax balance note. You can also refer to it as the analysis of temporary differences, etc. So from here, what workings are we going to need to do as well? So the workings for the major component and the tax rate reconciliation, you're going to have to do quite a few workings. Um, for your major components, you will definitely need your current tax computation. And then you'll just need to consider things like your over and under provision, etc. But the big one is going to be your current tax comp um, as well as your CGT comp if that is applicable. Okay, next up you're also going to need to do your statement of financial position approach calc. as well as your movement in temporary differences calculation. So great, let's get stuck in. First up, we're gonna do your tax expense, and we're gonna start with the major components thereof. Okay, so the major components here, we are following the new IS-12 and that's going to have two major components. You're going to have your current tax expense and that's going to consist of, well, your SA current, your SA current tax, so that's going to be the current tax that's going to be on your um, income tax return. There might very well be a foreign income tax. So your foreign current tax. If there's a difference between last year's tax computation and the assessment that you receive from the tax authority, I might very well have an over or under provision. And all of these, as we're going along, SA current tax, we're going to have a debit that'll make the tax expense bigger. Remember, for companies tax, we don't have a tax income in terms of current tax. Foreign current tax, we also would probably land up with an expense. So that would mean it's all a positive, being a debit expense. Under over provision, well, if you've over provided, then you would do a change in estimate this year and reduce the tax expense credit. If it was an under provision, you would need to do an adjustment in this year's financials to increase the tax expense. Um, and obviously, previously, we also had STC current tax expense on dividends. Since the 1st of March, sorry, 1st of April 2012, that STC tax regime on dividends has fallen away, no longer applicable. So those would be your core current tax expense. You add them up and you'll get your total current tax expense. 
The second component, however, is going to be your deferred tax expense. Now, that deferred tax expense has quite a few components to it. Um, the first one would be your movements and temporary differences. And that's going to be your normal rates. And I'm going to ask you to disclose and calculate your capital gains or CGT rates and the movements thereon separately, especially for years such as 2012 when there was a change in the capital gains inclusion rate. Very important. So remember that could be a positive or a negative depending on whether it's a taxable or deductible temporary difference movement. And that you will calculate ideally from your statement of financial position approach, calculate deferred tax balance, opening balance, closing balance, and work out the movement. There is the alternative that you can work that from your current tax computation and CGT tax computation. Next up, um, you're also going to have a look at your assessed losses or tax losses. I'm going to put down both method wording here. Your tax loss might be preferred. And here, your basic principles are going to be that you are going to either have a tax loss carried forward in the current year. So in the current year, you had a tax loss. So I'm just going to write there, carry forward in the current year. And that is always going to be, well, there a carry forward is a deferred tax asset because there's a future deduction in tax, a future economic benefit. So I'm going debit, deferred tax financial position, credit deferred tax profit and loss. That would make that a credit to the tax expense. Um, I also could have a, an amount brought forward from prior year. That would be last year's tax loss carry forward that now is being utilized in the current year to reduce current taxable income. There I'm going to be going debit deferred tax profit and loss or the expense, credit deferred tax financial position. That would make my amount larger. Yes, there's also going to be a discussion about unrecognized tax loss carry forwards. Please also remember that this assessed loss is also going to have the same implications for um, capital tax losses. So your capital assessed loss. There, we will do a lecture on capital, um, impl capital gains implications for deferred tax. But over here, I just realized that losses that are capital in nature are ring-fenced and cannot be offset against normal taxable income. So we do those separately from the normal assessed loss carry forward. So once again, I've got my carry forward in the current year, as well as the amount brought forward from previous years. Okay, same signs. You would have a credit for the carried forward in the current year and a debit profit and loss for the amount brought forward into the current year. So what else would go in here? I would also have quite a big one here. If there is a change in tax rates, that's going to result in a change in estimate to my deferred tax. So I'd have a change in tax rate that could either be a debit or credit to profit and loss, depending on whether the tax rates are going up and down, as well as depending on whether my opening balance or closing balance um, is going to be an asset or liability balance. So those are your basic items for your deferred tax. You would add up the deferred tax expense side and you would then have a total. The current tax expense, let's just clean this up over here, the current tax expense plus or minus the deferred tax expense because it could very well be a credit would give me my total income tax expense for the year. Remember this is just the total income tax expense going through profit and loss. So that's total tax expense, and that's going through profit and loss. Okay, so that's the first part of the income tax expense note. The second part is something we call the tax rate reconciliation.
Okay, so if you recall back to our basic principles lecture, we said that in a perfect world, the tax man would have the same treatment as the accounting effects. Because for accounting, we're looking at fair presentation, economic reality, substance over form, etc. Whereas the tax man doesn't have those, um, those abilities because they're trying to set up a set of rules for all companies. So we're going to start here with profit before tax. Let's say, for example, 100,000. I would put a double line underneath that and I'd work out my tax at the standard rate which in this scenario was 28% so I would have a tax expense in a perfect world of 28,000 but based on the whole concept of the deferred tax we know that the tax man has different timing of deductions compared to us but as well sometimes the tax authority does not tax all the incomes that we account for as income and sometimes, quite regularly, he does not give you the same deductions for tax purposes as what you get for accounting or what you would like to put through for accounting. So sometimes there's going to be non-taxable income as well as non-deductible expenses. So what do we do here? Here, those things are going to permanently change the rate of tax to a different effective tax rate. So the whole point of this tax rate reconciliation now is to really show the user of financial statements. How do we get to our effective tax when it is different to the tax on profit before tax times 28%? And here you'll see we would often add in non-deductible expenses. Please remember I'm taking that expense and I'm timesing it by 28%. To get the tax effect thereof, I'd add those in. So some good examples would be speeding fines. The tax man does not give you speeding fines as a tax deduction. You might put that through as an expense into your books, but the tax man will never give you that as a deduction. There would also be non-taxable income. Once again, I'm taking that and timesing it by 28%. And that taxable income, although I've included it in profit before tax, items such as dividends received, the tax man does not tax you on dividends received. There's quite a few of those type of incomes, so therefore I would reverse out the effect of that at 28%, reduce the tax expense. Another common one is going to be your change in tax rate for deferred tax. That is an overall under provision based on the old tax rate versus the new tax rate when there's a change in that tax rate. That affects a change in estimate, which means that our tax this year is not going to be based on the latest tax rate of 28%. There would be a tax change in tax rate that would either increase or decrease the tax expense, depending on the original opening balance and whether the uh, deferred tax rate is going up or down. So that change in tax rate would be a reconciling item in our tax rate recon. Along the same thought, we've got an under or over provision that would result in an increase or a decrease in the current tax rate. Um, also, if there's an unrecognized tax loss, that would result in a in a increase in the tax rate and there could also be foreign income well that foreign income would often be taxed on a different tax rate compared to south african tax rates so there might be an increase in tax expense or a decrease in tax expense based on whether their foreign tax rate is higher or low the final one which we will elaborate on in a bit more detail as we go through the series, is the effects of capital gains, CGT. We all know that capital gains are not taxed at the full tax rate, and that generally would result in a decrease in the tax rate. So the whole point is here, we are going from a tax at the standard rate to an effective tax rate that is going to be very different based on all these 
permanent type differences, capital gains, foreign income, dividends received, fines paid, etc. Now, this can be done in rands, or alternatively, you could do this in percentages. And you would add or subtract to get to a different percentage from 28%. For academic purposes, we definitely recommend that you only do this based on rands. Saves you one step in the calculation, less chance for error. Final step in my disclosures is I will do the disclosure for the balance items. So the statement of financial position balance on deferred tax assets or liabilities. And here you will just call this note the deferred tax balance. Or, as I mentioned earlier, you could call this the analysis of temporary differences, etc. So here, again, our suggestion, especially in a perfect world, I would split up my rates between use, sale for CGT, and give a total. So the most common here, you would list the individual items. So if you had property that gave rise to a deferred tax, um, if you're going to be using that as PPE, well, that would give rise to deferred tax asset or liability based on use. If there was no sale items, you would have nothing under sale with a deferred tax liability total. I'm just putting down X's, we're not using figures now, just to illustrate the formats. There might also be a provision. Um, once again, that would probably give rise to a deferred tax asset nothing under sale, and a total deferred tax asset. And we'll go on and work through all our temporary differences. Okay, so we'll go balance from normal temporary differences. Next up, we would be wanting to do the assessed losses. So assessed loss, I'm going to ask you to follow the following format. The assessed loss, I would split up between the tax carry forward where you're going to definitely recognize an asset and there may very well be a portion of that that needs to be de-recognized based on the probabilities of those future benefits being utilized. So you might very well have an unrecognized portion. And that would obviously reduce that asset to so we'll put a little, a little liability balance there. Giving me my total tax loss carry forward, the assessed loss. And I would carry that through to my total column. And the other assets you might come through here, you might very well have your STC credits which are now basically falling away based on the new dividends tax, withholding tax, but that could very well have been there. So then you would have a total deferred tax asset or liability. And you need to look at whether you are allowed to offset this or whether you want to offset it as one balance or show the assets and liabilities separately. Great, so that's our lecture on the format that you will need for your disclosures. The next lecture is now going to address the format and the layouts for the current tax computation and the deferred tax balance sheet calculation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.